We're going to resume our, our interview with our second candidate. Uh, I, I, I got word that uh, Bill Courtright is not going to be able to attend at 7.30. He's not going to be able to attend. He's make at another time. His campaign manager, I won't mention his name, he is, he's gravely sick and was sent to the hospital. So uh, Bill is a little upset about it. So when your brother died. And my brother died Monday, yeah. Sorry about that, huh? That's all right. I appreciate that. I, I, I just had to set up. That's why I came in here, or I wouldn't be. I'd be grieving, you know. So, yeah. I understand. Sure. Okay, uh, Joe. We appreciate you coming here. You have to give us a little background about yourself, Joe. Where you live, the way out of the area, married, whatnot. Well, uh, let me thank you for inviting me uh, for this opportunity to come in and talk with you, answer some questions. My background uh, is a. Um, uh, born and raised in the city, uh, the north, the north end, small section called uh, called Bull's Head. I'm a third generation uh, Scrantonian, and um, married a uh, lovely girl from the Notch section of the city, Holy Rosary. And for the last 30 years, we have been living in the Plot section, uh, raising raising four kids. And uh, we, uh, we love each other, and we, we love this town very much. Yes, uh, Joe, you, uh, Joe at one time was the uh, director for the Office of, of Community Development, for our grant program, right, Joe? Right? Uh, it was or at that time, it was at the time it was the, uh, the Community Development uh, Office, and it was separate from, from the uh, Office like of the Economic and, and Community uh, Development. Uh, yeah. That was in the in the early 90s, and when uh, PEL came in as part of the recovery plan, uh, they changed the name to um, License and Inspections. Oh, right, right. License right. and Inspections, right. but it's now still it's in the lips. same. Yeah, right. still, yeah, is there a lip state? Lips, lips, License, Inspections. License permits. and Inspections, um, and that covers zoning and planning. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, the first question we want to ask you, we're going to ask you a few questions, then we'll open up for the floor, okay? Sure. Uh, If elected, what will be the first financial action you would take in 2014 uh, to ensure Scranton's survival and begin the recovery process? The first, the first action, obviously, is our, our financial situation. We're looking at going into 2014 uh, budget. We're at the end of this year, we're looking, if I'm understanding, the mayor and council, uh, even though there's a 25% tax hike this year for 2013, we're still going to be coming up short in the tune, to the tune of like 8 to $10 million by the end of this year. So 2014, according to the recovery plan, is another 25% tax hike. The question comes down to if 25, 20 to 25 percent in 2013 isn't enough, what is it going to take in 2014? Is it going to be more than 22 or 25? And the recovery plan is a three-year plan that was approved, and that is in 2015 another 22 to 25 percent. That was what I was going to mention in your financial plan. Then what would it be for 14, 15, 16, 17? You're With that being said. With that being said, of that type of tax hike that's already approved, I have to, I have to look and turn to 2014 and, and, and say, wait a minute now, at the state level, not as much as the federal level, there's things, there are things happening now at the state level. There's movement regarding nonprofits and what is the guideline of a nonprofit and there's movement also at the state level regarding pension plans where they're, where they're proposing, there's legislation there to freeze pension plans. When you're looking at a city that averages, the average salary in this city is, of the working people in this city is 22 to $28,000 a year. And the average salary of a city employee 
is in 42,000 to 62,000 a year. I don't know how you can, how as, 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 as the mayor, how can you not look at those numbers and say, we have to do something, we have to bring that closer together. Is it a wage freeze, the proposal to the city unions? But the reality of the financial situation, it just smacks you right in the face at going into the end of this year and next year. Okay. Uh, in regards to nonprofits, you know, uh, right now they take the, what they call pilot's payment in lieu of taxes. Uh, if you're elected, uh, this has been accomplished successfully in other municipalities in Pennsylvania and other states. Uh, if so, you plan to pursue these pilots or these nonprofits, uh, how do you explain how you could do this? Lackawanna County Taxpayer Association. My understanding, you are a nonprofit. As a nonprofit, you collect dues. You provide community service as a nonprofit. You take your dues and you use them to help within the community. That's an example of what you do. How many other nonprofits do we have out there that do what you do? I don't, I don't think there's many. Now, in order for the nonprofits to look favorable, favorably on on city government, mayor and council. We have to show them, as your mayor, we have to show them, as your council, that we are going to put some skin in the game here also. So we expect something back from the nonprofits. How do we do that? Well, I've proposed keeping the mayor's salary at what it is right now, $50,000. There's no reason to increase that. I've proposed that the city council should be reduced to a dollar a year for their salary. These are things that are temporary. These are temporary until we can get to a point where real revenue exceeds our expenses. We are nowhere near real revenue exceeding our expenses. To the Somewhere of, of real revenue into the city is fifty-five, sixty million dollars. We're talking about a hundred, a hundred and ten million dollar budget. So the nonprofits, for us to go to the nonprofits and say to them, we have the Lackawanna County Taxpayer Association as an example. This is what they give back to the community, financially and in services. And now we have a mayor and we have a council that's also holding the line. So when you go to those nonprofits, we look more inviting for them to follow your lead. Thank you. Uh, you know, I can call it Joe, OK? Joe. Uh, Called me worse. <laughs> A potential sale of the Scranton Sewer Authority has been reported in the media, and the Sewer Authority issued an RFP request for a proposal for appraisers and evaluations of his uh, assets uh, just a couple months ago. Do you uh, support a sale like this? So why or why not? No. Can we can can we ever learn? How are we are we ever going to learn from our mistakes? Our mistake was 10 years ago, let's sell the sewer authority and get an influx of money and before we could blink, that influx of, influx of money that came to the city on a sale of an asset turned into, I believe we paid them the same amount that they gave us for the sale and, and uh, more on top of that. That was what American Water. Uh, American Water, if that was the company that we sold the sewer authority to. 
it's been done. So your question is, my answer to the question is no, we have to learn from our mistakes. That was a mistake. We have an asset. An asset, for me, an asset would be the television in my house. I'm going to sell the television to my neighbor because I have to pay a bill. Okay, I sold an asset, I sold my television, and I paid my bill, but I have no television to watch now. I have no so if we sell the sewer authority, which is an asset, <laughs> to, pay, to pay bills, again, to me, it doesn't, it doesn't, make, it doesn't make any sense. We've done it. We, it wasn't successful. So my answer is no. Let's learn from our mistakes. Mayor Doherty did it with the municipal golf course also. Uh, as you recall, uh, was a sale. From what I from what I recall on the golf course, there was another influx of money that came in. That money was supposed to be used for certain expenditures, and how we govern, how the governing body governs, the money was used out of the everyday fund, whatever they call it, it was put in. So, so it comes down to, on that scenario, we sold it. Whether we should have sold it or not, the problem is, did we use the money the right way? Uh, that question is out there saying, no, we, we didn't. We sold an asset, we didn't use the money properly. But that's the past, and, and, but now we're looking Again, let's, if we want to call that a mistake of selling the municipal golf course, if we want to put it in that category, let's learn from that and let's not think about selling the sewer authority or let's not think about selling the parking or, well, the parking authority is a different issue completely. That's already has its, uh, I'm, 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 I'm thinking housing authority. The parking authority is a different issue that I'm sure we can, we're going to talk a little bit about, but the housing authority is another asset. Do we want to, we want to sell that? We're selling assets to pay bills. Okay, uh, next question. What's your thoughts uh, and your intentions to uh, raising property taxes, the wage tax, the business tax, and the garbage fee in order to balance the budget and meet the city's financial obligations? As you know, the city is always deficit in going into the budget that will be next year as it is last year. I'm going, to, I'm going to turn a little bit to at the state level. There is movement dealing with property tax. There's a lot of movement going on within the state legislature regarding property tax. Uh, and I think it's positive. Uh, it's positive movement that's, that's starting regarding that. If we are going, to are going to increase taxes, if we're going to increase taxes, the business mercantile tax, business tax, I think they have lumped it all into one right now, those taxes. If we're going to start increasing those taxes, then I really do think, I really do think we have, we really have, before we do that, we really have to sit down. As your mayor, the elected council, we have to sit down and say, wait a second, we're raising taxes for payment on a budget that right now is 75 to 85 percent labor related. So we're going to sit here and start talking about raising taxes to pay for labor that's 75 to 85 percent of our budget right now. I think the governing body has to take a real serious look at, at that before they start looking at raising taxes and maybe look at at the state level that freeze. Maybe, maybe the unions within the city have to look at a freeze, a temporary wage freeze, until we can get, get to that point where there's real money coming in that'll, that'll come close to our expenses. I, I don't see any sense without one, one not having to do with the other. Whether the unions will want to come in, I like to believe they would. As your mayor, I think I could. I'm capable of bringing people together, but that's a that's a very serious that's a very that's a very serious very difficult issue that we're we're faced with in the city. It's not an easy one. It's not it's not easy dealing with that. It's not easy living in this city to begin with. 
It's not easy. So that's a, a very hard place to be, looking at taxes to pay for a budget that is 80% wages. Joe, you know before that you don't want to talk about the past, but we learn from the past. And uh, what's your thoughts in regards to the mayor attending regular city council meetings? With its staff, if required, to, for whatever the agenda is on the agenda for that night. That's a good point. A good point, Ozzy. That we need to look back. We need to look back to know, understand how we're going to go forward. We need to look back on the last 40 years, and I say the last 40 years is that's how long. 1975, we have been a home rule charter town. In those 40 years, 40 plus years, as a home rule charter town, the charter has an administrative code that says the mayor may, the mayor may attend council meetings, may attend council meetings. <clears throat> we should amend, as your mayor, an effort should be made to amend the administrative code to stay, the mayor shall attend council meetings. It's a simple from may attend to shall attend. Now, the administrative code carries some weight, but does it carry the weight that the home rule charter? It's just a, it's an addendum to the charter. How much weight does it carry? The last 40 years, we've had mayors tell us, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. When it comes to council meetings, I'll cooperate. But I really do think that the weight that can be put on the mayor is the council is the legislative body. They can pass a law. They can pass the law that says a very simple thing for people who are, most of the people that work and live in the city, they face with the same type of wording in, in contracts for the company they work for. No call, no show, no pay. So now the council becomes, they become the mechanism. If the mayor is not going to cooperate, if the council amends the administrative code and puts in there the mayor shell and the mayor doesn't cooperate, the council can come back as, as the legislative people, the lawmaking people, to say, I don't know if it's, if it's worth paying the mayor if he doesn't show up in this room. Now that's the extreme. That's the very extreme of this whole scenario. But let's let's learn what happened last summer what happened last summer is that the city workers did not get paid and how did they finally get paid the mayor and council came to this table and got an agreement together it was there was nowhere else to go they came to the table and they agreed so the answer to the to the question is a very simple that's how we get government the governing body to govern they have to be in the, they've got to be in the room together. It's not anything different than all of the little towns around us. Uh, they do it. it. They have their mayor and their council, and they have their manager. And they get together in the same room, in the same table, and with the public, and they govern. But for us here, but for us here, that is, you know, it's been in the last 40 years it hasn't happened and that's I really truly believe as your mayor I can make that I can make it happen I'll get into a little more I'm sure I but I was in that scenario where I was the chief executive officer of the small towns around here after I left city government but I'm sure you'll we can get to that a little bit later no I want to explain that a little bit really. <clears throat> when I left city government I was in city government in the 90s early 90s. I had an opportunity to become the town manager for three of the small surrounding towns in, this, in, in the area. And what you are as a town manager, as a borough manager, as a uh, township administrator, you're, you're appointed, you're interviewed, you're appointed by the chief elected officers. And you become the chief executive officer of the town. 
So as the manager, you're in charge of the daily operation of the town. I have 10 years of experience with that, including my time here in the city and as the chairman of the Civil Service Commission, where my opponents don't have that experience. So as 10 years of experience as day-to-day -day operation, that goes to the point where I'm working right alongside the police department, I'm working alongside the volunteer fire department. I am right in the trenches. I have been in the trenches with them. And my opponents, they can claim that they've, they've worked in, in county government as, as chief of staff or they were elected councilmen, but, and, and they, they worked in private sector, but no one has that 10 years of experience that I was in the trenches as the chief executive officer. And as your mayor, that's what you become, chief executive officer of the town. And I have, I've been down that road with that experience for 10 years in four different towns. And I think that, I think for sitting at this table, if this was, if this was to be determined on, on that qualification, I think in a, a show of hands it would be, sure, we want someone that has 10 years of experience, rather have someone with zero years of experience. But let me just end with, let me end with, the important thing about, about it is, in our home rule charter, the qualifications for the mayor is a citizen of the United States, a resident of the city, and a registered voter. So that qualifies, that qualifies us all to be there. To end it completely is, as, you, as your mayor, I want to be the mayor because I want to be the mayor. I have a passion, I have a drive, I have an experience that I can bring to this, to this town a positive, confident attitude with my, back, with my experience. Thank you. Do you mind opening up for some questions, Alfred? <clears throat> Andy, you want to talk? I want to pass the mic, please. The only question I got, really, you were talking about a wage freeze for the firemen or city employees. Of course, you realize we had a wage freeze that cost us $17 million. So what good would another wage freeze be? The only thing you can actually do instead of this wage freeze is negotiate with the police and fire department, not put in wage freezes. That did not work, will not work. Another thing, our charter is not working. It's obvious to anybody our city charter is not working. What we should do is redo the government of the city of Scranton and correct some of the faults we have in it. And you always have to look to the past to foresee the future. There's no way out of it. And that's all I want to say on that. Uh, Andy, uh, a good point on the wage freeze. What, what, had trans, what has transpired, my understanding of it, the wage freeze that you mentioned, my understanding of what's transpired over the last 10 years was negotiations. It was, it was negotiations between uh, the mayor, the governing body, the mayor and council, and the unions. It, it continued on, go, it continued to go nowhere. And, it, and, and then it brought us, it brought us, that those negotiations brought us to the Supreme Court. They never looked at it. The mayor and his negotiation and the council and their negotiations in Pell with the unions never looked at it as any wage freeze. They were trying to get to a, a number that, was satisfy, that would satisfy everybody. It didn't happen. The Supreme Court came back. My understanding of this, the Supreme Court came back and said, I believe it was because of one word, uh, arbitration over, uh, I can't think of, but is it an arbitration case or is it a, I can't think if that was just the one word. And the Supreme Court said, we're going to rule over the last 10 years in favor of the unions, $30 million reward to the unions. We're, what brings, what brings me to the point of when I talk about a wage freeze, a temporary wage freeze through negotiation, what opens, what, to me, what opens the door, it shows, I'm going to say, uh, a soft spot in the, in the union. Okay, they looked and said, 30 million, and I think they 
I don't know if they blinked or they gulped or they, they just said, we don't want that much. We, we, don't, we are, again, rightfully, legally, we are entitled to this money, but we don't want it. I, I mentioned about giving back. So they showed us, they showed us, the citizens, that they're willing to give back. They gave back 15 million of it and, and said over a 10 year period, whatever that comes to. I have no problem with that, Andy, no problem. What I'm talking about is the negotiated. It would be as your mayor on January 1st of 2014, my, my charge would be to get the council, the governing body, the mayor, right here in this room with the cameras, transparency, let's sit down and see how we're going to bring that twenty-two dollars to $28,000 salary that the workers in this city earn and that average salary of the city employees of forty-two dollars to 62000 how can we work that together? If, let's, let's work together. Let's, that's the wage freeze, Andy, that I would be talking a temporary because what we're looking for, Andy, is we're looking to get to real income, not ex exceeding expenses. To answer the second part of your question on Home Rule Charter, I guess you could call it uh, a tweak. It needs to be tweaked a little bit. I think the tweak, the Home Rule Charter, I, was, I had the honor, I had the honor to be elected to the Home Rule Charter Review Commission in 1990. The Home Rule Charter was written in 1975. I was, I was elected 11-member panel uh, by referendum to review the Home Rule Charter. We went through the charter line by line, and we proposed a whole different charter. And what happened, it was in the May primary, just like we have a May primary coming now, and it was, it was the Doherty, uh, it was Doherty Connors in the May primary against each other. And what happened was it was, uh, it was a combination of vote for me and vote no for the Home Rule Charter, which we proposed. Yeah. Line by line, we changed the entire char charter. So Andy, the change in government, I think, my opinion, my opinion, is a simple tweaking of it. Change a word, the mayor shall. Let's work on that as, as part of the administrative code. I, I really don't think the Home Rule Charter as it sits, after having gone through a review in 2000, needs to be completely reviewed again. I do think there needs to be some referendums maybe. We're getting hit with referendums on the county level now, but maybe just maybe, I'd like to start as your mayor tweaking the administrative code and let's see if we can get to the point where the governing body finally gets into this room on a weekly basis. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm Bill. gonna ask you the same, same question that I asked Mr. Morgan. And basically a short answer would suffice because you pretty much answered the question already. And the question is, will you be willing to reduce salaries of city employees even if it means <clears throat> renegotiating contracts? $1.3 million bi-weekly payroll is not affordable or sustainable. So judging from what you said earlier, I'm, I'm assuming that your answer is yes. We all have to have some skin in the game. We have to have some skin in the game. As your mayor, my first action, and not to repeat myself, bring that salary back to 50000 If that salary, if that mayor, if, as your mayor, I don't show up to council meetings, put my foot to the, hold my feet to the fire. But don't pay me as your mayor. Okay, and also uh, my second question would, would you, if you cannot renegotiate contracts and salaries stay the same, and we stay at this 1.3, million bi-weekly salary, would you be willing to raise property taxes and taxes in the city by 100% if necessary to meet salaries? I'm optimistic. I'm confident. It's a challenge. It's a major difficult issue to, to get to that point. I'm, my experience dealing with this, the towns that I was the town manager, the chief executive officer, I sat through those negotiations with small police departments. There were no negotiation with the fire department. Um, I have negotiation experience in the private sector back in the 80s. I worked for a company that were, were Teamsters and, and understanding as the chief negotiator in human resources, the, 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 the proposal was fair and equal. 
dealing with that organization in the private sector. But your, the answer, I'm, I'm, I'm confident. I, I know that when you, I know that as your mayor, when you make a proposal, you go to the unions and just say to them, this is simple arithmetic. This is where we are. You are going into houses and you are going to protect people that are earning twenty-two to twenty-eight thousand dollars. You're earning forty-two to sixty-two thousand. I know the police and fire are not going to say, "Oh, we're not going to save those people because they own." I know they're not going to do that. They're going, they're going to look and say, "I really do think that there's a soft part that the unions are saying." Wait a second. For us to go into the future, we need to get a handle on our past, and for us to move to the future, we need to really look to say. A wage freeze, a negotiated wage freeze right now is doable. No, nobody, we have, a lot of, we have a lot of those twenty-two to $28,000 citizens, taxpayers out there now with foreclosure signs on their, in front of their house. I don't mean to be sarcastic, but I don't think we have any, any of that with any of our city employees. And I don't, and I honestly don't mean to be sarcastic, but I think that right there uh, tells, tells a lot of the picture. We have citizens in this town that are, that are hurting, and we have a budget that's paying for, that's bringing 75 to 85 percent is a labor cost. I see this as a very simple, not a very complicated, but we have to approach it with a lot of confidence and perseverance. And that's what our town is, that's what this town is all about. We've persevered for 175 years. Um, and that's the way our past is. Hardworking, blue collar, white collar people. City employees, citizens of this town. I think we can, I, I, we can bring it together. I know, I'm confident that I can bring it, bring it, resolve it, fix it. Do you have a question then? We're probably reaching the end of our That's all right, Bob. Um, I would agree with you on the sewer authority. Uh, one of my sources uh, from the River uh, Car Lackawanna River Carter Association stated that they actually milked it when American Anglian was in charge of the sewer authority. They weren't incorporating the changes that they were supposed to and thereby we got fined uh, about a million dollars or two uh, because of the EPA. But uh, one of the things I'd like to point out is that the economy may not improve in the foreseeable future and uh, over the last 30 years private sector employees have their, their wages have been stagnant. So that's what you have to deal with as a mayor and I hope that you can do it, but uh, uh, somewhere along the line, the public employees are going to have to accept that they have to freeze their wages or reduce their ranks and, and just live with what, uh, what it, it, is, uh, we've, we've just had too much, too many people going backwards on wages recently with, uh, with the, and uh, their, uh, they're, they're guaranteed a COLA or something like that, and the next guy is going backwards, and, and that's where the problems are coming in. But uh, I certainly hope you're not being over-optimistic over there. I explain how you wouldn't be. Yeah, it did, uh, the, the point, I think what you just, what you said about the private and, and the public, if there's a silver lining, if there's a silver lining, and again, I don't want to sit here and be, the, and be the, the, the candidate that's going to be, I'm going to balance this budget on the backs of these union people. Uh, no, that's not the message that I want to get out there. Nowhere near that. If, if, we, follow, if, if we follow the simple arithmetic, as I've, I've stated, to answer your question, Dave, why not? Why not if a retired firefighter or city employee clerical whatever that wage is, why not negotiate a lower entry-level wage? 
a lower entry level wage. I believe now the city employees uh, entry level starts somewhere in the area of 30 to 32,000. So to bring that comparable to the citizens that work and live in this town, let's be optimistic. Let's come to the negotiating table and say, if we're going to have a city employee that's going to retire that's earning 60,000, let's bring in two employees at a lower rate to replace that city employee, put another police officer in the car possibly on a certain shift, put another firefighter on the engines going to fight the fire at a lower wage. I really do think that, I really do, and being, being on the Civil Service Commission for five or six years as the chairman in the 90s, a lot of the people that came in through civil service are still working for the city. I, I know who they were. I know the testing they went through. The civil service monitored it. I do know that the employees, if we were to ask that, I don't think we would have a shortage of applicants. I really don't, I don't believe we'd have a shortage of applicants if we advertised and we were able to negotiate with the unions a lower entry level comparable to, comparable to what Dave said in the private sector it's 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 right there again and i i don't mean to uh, repeat myself but it's simple arithmetic well joe's time is up and uh so i guess uh it's going to hang on for coming here tonight and you did a good job i just, uh, I just like to wish the, uh, the the all the candidates that are running uh, the best of luck to them. I, I think we, we've seen all the candidates really working, working hard. And again, uh, uh, you, for you to keep working hard at what you're doing, I think you guys, this, this uh, uh, Taxpayer Association has, has done a great thing in the six, seven years that you've been, you've been formed. And, and thank you once again. And to your chairman. Thank you, Joseph. Okay, sir. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. All right, buddy. Okay. I'll see you for... Uh... Well,